Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to be installing this thing and the earth rod that goes with it. And I'm going to be putting it in this garden here. I'm going to be installing this in the flower bed just to the right of me here. And that's mainly so then we can use the lawn as a demonstration area for putting the temporary spikes in for testing. Now, uh, this isn't actually going to be connected to the electric installation, it's really just for demonstration purposes. But uh, we'll uh, cover that in a later video or maybe videos. So, first thing of all is to get this thing uh, in the ground. Obviously, so this is uh, flush with the top of the soil here. So, that's where it'll be going, just on the side there next to that uh, piece of timber. That's just decorative, it doesn't have any functional purpose. And obviously, then the next thing is just to dig a hole using the spade provided just there. And uh, this is just going in this garden, so there aren't any other surfaces or pipes, cables, or whatever underground here. However, if you're going to put this somewhere else, like in the street or at someone's front garden, then you would, of course, need to check that there aren't any things hidden under the ground before digging and shoving things in. So this is in the back garden here. There's nothing concealed under here, so not a problem with that. So there's the hole there, and I've put some of that weed covering fabric in the bottom of there, so that uh, hopefully things won't start growing up in there, though. But it's going to be in the dark anyhow, so it shouldn't be a problem. And so you could set this into concrete or whatever as well, or put paving or whatever around it. No particular problem there, just say dig the hole, fill in the sides, and uh, that's pretty much it. So next thing is to put the actual rod itself into the hole there. Now here's the rod, and uh, it's got obviously the pointy end there. And I put that thing on the end, which we saw in the previous video. Now we're going to start it in with this hammer here. I've already put a hole in the fabric in the bottom there, so we just get that uh, lined up in there. And then we just start it tapping in with the hammer. So there's our rod uh, most of the way in there. So this is pretty soft here. Now I've driven that all the way into the ground there. And uh, as you can see, it's now well below the level of the surrounding soil. So we're fairly down at the bottom of the box there. Now we used a hammer on this one because the ground here, say, is fairly soft. You can use a power drill if you want to, should you uh, have one of those. Obviously, you get the relevant attachment, just goes on the end. Let's say in this case, it's say, pretty soft here, so not a major problem. So uh, what we need to do now is to remove the threaded part. And as we saw in the previous episode, that uh, if you wanted to join on an additional rod, then you would thread the other one in here, and then of course continue driving it in the ground. Now, this is only for demonstration, really, so we're just going to go with the one on this one, so, so we'll keep that for future use. So, final thing then is just to the uh, threaded piece here, the clamp part, so it's threaded inside, and then you can tighten this up afterwards, so that would install onto the rod down in there. And then we'll just tighten that up there. Uh, we can then attach to that with whatever wire we were going to use. Now in this particular case, we're not going to be attaching an actual wire to the installation to this, because this is just for demonstration. But uh, that's where you would obviously attach your earth wire going off to the main earth terminal. But uh, so in this one, we're not going to be uh, doing that. We're just going to use this as a demo. So that's uh, pretty much it for the installation of this one. Now that's installed in the ground, so we need to do some testing now. And uh, the test we're going to do this time is using the loop impedance feature of the uh, test instrument. And we're going to use that Mega 1741, which we've seen previously. Now we're going to use a two wire test, which means it's a high current, and that of course would trip any RCD that was around. So we need to connect somewhere where there isn't an RCD. And we're actually going to do that at the main consumer unit of this property. And in order so we can actually reach the electro, we're going to use this long wire here. So we're going to connect this end to our newly installed earth electrode, take this inside to the consumer unit, and then we're going to test between the connection here and the line connection on the incoming supply. Now, when you're testing this, you're not actually testing the electrode itself because, of course, that's just one part of it. You're actually testing the entire earth loop. But it is a valid test to use, but just bear in mind it's not the electrode only. It's actually the electrode and the rest of the earth loop you're testing as well. So uh, let's get on with that one. Now, in theory, you could use, say, the uh, low current test or the, say, three wire or whatever one you've got, but uh, that tends to be less accurate. So recommend to use the high current test and to do it directly from the origin so you're not having any of the circuit wiring being involved. 
So first of all, just going to clip this onto the electro in the ground here. And we're going on to that top threaded part. So we're directly on the actual electro there. It's a bit of uh, plastic there from that equipment. So that's uh, gripped on there. And so this is 50 meters long. So this will easily reach to the consumer unit in the house. Now inside now, so we've got the roll of wire here and that green end goes out to the earth electrode outside. Now we're using this because that electrode say, isn't actually attached to this installation. Normally there would be of course a green and yellow wire from the consumer unit which is just up there through the building off the outside into the garden and connected to that earth electrode. So on a normal installation you wouldn't actually need to use this, you could just use the wire that's already put into the consumer unit. You would need to disconnect it from the main earthing terminal and of course need to turn off the power before doing that. Obviously there's the installation with no earth connection. So then you're just testing between the open end of that wire which is just from there directly to the electrode and then just test between that and the incoming supply which we'll have a look at in a moment. I say so this is effectively the wire which would go through the building to the earth electrode outside. Now it's important to disconnect the earth electrode wire from the main earth terminal because if you just measure directly you're going to have other paths to earth via the main bonding such as gas, water and similar things. So you do need to disconnect it because we're interested in testing the electrode on its own, not when it's connected to all kinds of other stuff that's uh, going to be in the installation. Now we're going to need two test leads for this. This one here, this is just one with a plug on each end, just a green one, one of which goes into the thing there. That goes into our testing instrument. And then the other one we can use is this one, which again goes into the test there. Just has the uh, small point on the end and it also has the test button on the side there so we don't have to uh, have six hands to work all this stuff at the same time. So let's have a look at the consumer unit, how we're going to connect up there. So here's our consumer unit, I've turned off the power already. These are still on but there's no power going through these. This is a Crabtree one, has this concealed bus bar arrangement so these things just basically plug in. And uh, in the top there we can see the usual tangle of wires, fairly typical for most domestic installations, no one really seems to give any care on these. So uh, if this was an actual uh, earth electrode for this building then there would be of course a wire up here connecting to that outside and say so it would be one of these on this end. But say so in this case there isn't so hence we're using that long roll of wire instead. But it would be basically turn off the power, remove the wire from here which goes to the electrode. That end then is one of your test ends. And this is a two wire test for loop impedance. So we're going to test between the incoming supply, that's actually inside that hole there, that's where that red incoming tail goes in. So it's simply between here and then the end of that, or in this case our lengthy lead which we have from outside. Here's the test we're going to use this time. It's the Mega MFT1741. So we want to turn the control here to the loop testing function. So just round to LPE there. And we want to be on uh, just Z here, we don't really need the maximum one because we're just doing it once only. Now this is on currently the three wire low test which we don't particularly want so we'll just uh, change that by the button here to two wire high current and then just need to attach our wires and see what result we get. So here we have a ladder at a jointy angle. This is one side of our test which goes outside to the electrode, so normally it would be in there, just disconnected from the main earth bar there. And the other end is this uh, test lead here. So all we need to do is place this onto the line terminal and start the test going. Two wire test, so of course only two wires involved. And it has got the button on here, you can just press if you need to start the test going. This is actually set to do it automatically when power is applied, so that's uh, even easier. So let's uh, just give it a go and see what results we can get. Okay, well that's the test complete. Uh, it is important to press fairly hard on these to make a good connection on the terminal, particularly with these rather thin GS38 compliant ends. So some people might be tempted just to uh, hook that off and use that, but uh, I'm sure that happens a lot, but not really supposed to do that. So anyway, have a result on the display here. You can see that there. So uh, there's our test result. So let's have a closer look at that. So here's our test result and we can see there the uh, reading was 106 ohms, fault current was 2 amps. Now 2 amps might seem very small and indeed it is, but bearing in mind it's 100 ohms there, so 230 volts say divided by 100 would be around 2.3 amps, so 2 amps of course is what you'd expect to see there. So uh, 100 ohms there, that is actually acceptable. In theory the maximum is uh, 
1600 and some ohms if you've got a 30 milliamp RCD, but in reality, under 200 ohms is certainly recommended. And certainly, if you can get it under 100, then obviously that's even better. But uh, 100 ohms there, perfectly fine. And it's also important to realize this 100 ohms is not just the electrode itself. As I said earlier, we're actually measuring the entire loop. So uh, it's not just the electrode, it's uh, all the rest of the stuff as well. And that long lead we're using, that uh, 50 meter job, that's actually got a resistance of about 1 ohm. So that's at least one of those ohms there, so that'll be 105 without it. And the rest is what we're measuring basically through the ground back to the transformer, wherever that is. And also whatever earthing arrangement there is at the transformer itself. And also the wires from the transformer back to the installation here. So perfectly reasonable. And i say that was a fairly acceptable result, certainly just for one rod stuck in the ground outside. So that's one method of testing an earth electrode. And it's certainly for an existing installation, that would be by far the easiest method. So simply turning off the power, removing the wire that goes to the electrode, testing between the end of that and the incoming line. And there's your result. So perfectly reasonable there. Now, next time we're going to have a look at testing the electrode on its own. And we're going to use those three long leads we saw in the previous episode. So obviously we're doing that outside. That's going to be quite more involved. But uh, that will be used if you just wanted to test the electrode itself rather than the whole loop of the uh, system. And of course, you can also use that where there's no mains power available, say such as a remote site or somewhere where the power hasn't actually been connected yet. So again, that's quite a useful thing there. So, so we'll look at that uh, next time. And again, now we're doing that outside in the garden in that lawn, which we saw earlier. Now, once you've done the test like this, of course, the most important thing is to remember to reconnect the earthing electrode to the consumer unit or whatever, because of course that's the earth for the installation. So that needs to be reconnected properly, and then you can obviously turn the power back on and put the cover back on the consumer unit, which I'll be doing in a moment. So until next time, thanks for watching.